How's it going?
Oh my goodness, we got a tier one sub from an anonymous user that says, Wow, your casting is so good and I can't believe you're back at it. Wow, that's so kind, I can't believe it. <laughs> Actually, it's Bambi being rude to me. Bullying me on my own stream, I see how it is. Bambi is pretty scuffed. Uh, true, true. You get to watch it in game as well. <laughs> so yes, tonight we are joined by FDB, as some of you will know from the uh, voice. Otherwise, if you did not, uh, FDB and I will be casting. He's here for some analysis and also uh, kind of whatever he wants to do. He's new to casting, so it'll be be a fun experience. And then uh, I also have not casted in a while, so we may be scuffed as well. Just kind of like uh, HD's gameplay, you know? <laughs> yeah, you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> oh, man. I am excited, though. It's been a minute since I've <clears throat> casted, and uh, in theory, this should be a good game, I would assume. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, you and I have a little bit of history at Hangzhou, so it's, it's always entertaining to watch them play, and looking at the roster of the other team, they've got some uh, nice bit of talent stacked up here, so it should be a good game. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody who said, I think it was Ship Shape said there was their mock Overwatch League debut, so that's kind of exciting. Looks like a DPS. Well, there you go. That's cool. Actually, is it DPS or tank? Their tank is diamond and their DPS is gold. Okay, so I just saw, I just saw Genji and expected them to be DPS, but it looks like they are a tank player, possibly. But always fun to see a new player in the league, kind of see how they fit into their team and you know how they do gameplay-wise as well. Um, all right, anyone else? So, uh, we know HG, at least you and I know HG decently. Like, we know all these players. I kind of want to look over London's roster here. Uh, Ana, we know. Obviously, that's Amari. Uh, good Ana player. Then we said, um, Ship Ship, I'm assuming he's going to be a tank player. Diamond, which is pretty nice. Um, Noctua is support plat, I think. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, support plat. I was correct. Shredder, we know, he actually used to be on HD as well, so a little bit of history there. Uh, I think, do you remember, is he Diamond? I think he's Diamond Tank. But it's Shredder is a fun. Diamond Tank, yeah. Okay. And then we have Monkey Happy, who I have personally never seen before. Plat Tank, it looks like. Um, Betrayer, I don't know how to say that name. How would you say it? Is that B Betrayer? Um, looks good to me, yeah. That's, that's, what, that's what I'm gonna go with anyways, so apologies uh, if it's wrong, but... <laughs> yeah, somebody can correct us if they know otherwise. Hello, Ali Later, how are you? Um, it looks like another yeah, he's tank a, he's player. He's a black tank. Yeah, they, they seem to have a lot of tank players, from what I can see. Lady, who looks like gold support, most likely, and then Afinu, was that a support as well? Kind of hard to tell from their roster, but Wouldn't gold as well. You. It looks... Yeah, I think it's so poor. Gold across the board, I believe, yeah. Yeah, I would assume. Let's see, all modes. It's hard to tell. They play tank and support, but I would assume probably support since they have so many other tank players. Oh, is Shredder playing DPS now? Interesting. I mean, I'm just assuming from the way it's... Although, I think Afina is also a, a support, so they may just not be in there normal spots yet yeah, it'll be interesting to see but yeah i don't know i mean two of the players that i do know from london are spectating currently um so it's kind of a new roster to me it looks like they do have a lot of talent kind of across the board a lot of high ranks players can play tank and support or, or damage support whatnot exactly because it gives the, the lineups a lot of flexibility and you can kind of get you kind of get everyone in there yeah and i feel like they went for more of the centralized sr where it's like <clears throat> I think it's, what was it, two, like two golds, two, two or three plats, and then a diamond or two. Mm -hmm. um, and I think HG also went for a very similar idea. Waffley's, is he diamond this season or is he plat? I thought he was high plat. I could be wrong. Yeah, plat. No, just, just there. He actually hit diamond in open queue. Um, I believe 15 more SR yeah, he'd be tossing this team. That's crazy. <laughs> um, Rodeo is also plat. And then I think Endless is also plat. Yellow is also... No, Yellow is Diamond. And then Cynical is their Bronze support. Private profiles across the board. Oh my goodness. And then uh, Bambi is, of course, their bronze. hard thrower. <laughs> Lurking. Awesome. 
Dang, Kings baby, fine. almost got to Masters. True. Quite she good. She stopped playing. She took a break. She's a support carry. Yeah, look at this win rate. 55% on Mercy and Frick. I always do that. Um, 52 on Ana. 52 That's on Ana. That's very good. Pretty dang good with 6 hours and 2 hours, respectively. I think it's better than my win rates for my most played characters. Never mind. I lied. <laughs> <laughs> um, she played with a Mal debut poggers, indeed. So if yellow and core are their only diamonds, cynicals you said is bronze, so they should be coming in at like a negative one, yeah. Negative one here. Okay. Which is very nice for them. They can afford to put in another diamond, which I don't think they have. Although endless's currently. profile is blocked here. I believe he's plat unless he has climbed this season. I know last season he came in at plat. Um, I don't know if they're going to push for the public profile things. They're supposed to have it. Yeah. So but... on the official forums, Endless is a plat uh, damage player. Mm -hmm. And he, he is good for plat. I know that much. What is this prey icon? Is that rice? Hard carry, that's me? <laughs> she got baited. <laughs> she got baited. She said that's me, and I said she was a hard thrower, dude. <laughs> Easy mode. Oh man, we should have had a guest appearance from Xerxes, dude. That would have been the trifecta of casters. Yeah, we gotta get him in the chat at some point. <laughs> get some high level analysis in here. Yep, that'd be hilarious. Oh man, I'm excited for this game to start. Also, Ilios, we haven't talked about the map yet. That is, yeah, that was last week's, because this game was postponed from week two. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know much about lending, kind of what their strengths are, but thinking of HG, and we scrimmed them a couple times, mm -hmm. I would expect a Farah, probably a Ball, and a Hog, although Rodeo, I don't, does he play Hog? It really depends on who's playing tank here, because I know Yellow has a really good uh, Roadhog. Yes, that's true. I... Waffly can clutch there on the ball sometimes. Exactly, and I'm wondering, and I know, you know, obviously Bambi plays the Mercy, um, and then Cynical plays the Lucio, so they have that on. I think Endless plays the Tracer, so they have that all for the comp, but they're missing. I don't know if Rodeo plays any of the other tanks besides Ryan. Yeah, I'd be really interested even what role Rodeo is going to play here. If it's going to be damage or if it's going to be tank. I doubt it's support based on his SRs, but you never know. Do you remember... And see, I forget, because I know you used to be able to, to swap roles between rounds of control. And I don't remember if that's actually allowed or not. Because if it is, then you could see Yellow play the hog on, like, well, and then maybe they go um, and run something else. But I do think it's interesting that they're running two main tanks. I think that might be telling. Because mm -hmm. neither of them, I know Waffly does play a Roadhog, but I don't think he plays Zarya, and uh, so it's interesting that both main tanks, and I feel like that is for some kind of setup like that. You could even go a Risa Ball here. That's still good on well, if it is well. I mean, throughout the different maps on Elio, so you can see all different kinds of uh, comps, especially with the tanks. You may even just see Ryan Ball, honestly, or yeah. even like a Ryan uh, Hog could be pretty decent as well. I really expect yellow to come out on the Farah, but i know endless has a pretty good fair as well or maybe they don't <laughs> maybe they don't play fair at all i just i would expect to see it um and i'll be inter i'll be interested to see if they end up doing that uh bambi says yes she's a hard thrower um and then again compliments my casting i appreciate it thank you there very you much that's why you get the tier one <laughs> Uh, Alligator, I know I saw you, or I met you for like a little bit in a quick play game the other day, but I don't think we've officially met, so greetings. Uh, I, I, <clears throat> I don't remember, are you on a team? I think I saw you might have been on a team, but I couldn't remember if you were or not uh, in Mal. There's so many people in Mal, it's really hard for me to keep it all straight. Half the time, I don't even know who's on my own team. <laughs> <laughs> so I do notice there is a lot of uh, roster changes. I guess I guess coaches and managers are trying to get that right synergy in such a short season that they're kind of move a lot of players around, unfortunately, for better or for worse. Oh, yeah. It's a crazy... I mean, like, we had... What did we have? We had, like, a week to put it together, our roster, before the season started. Um, it was pretty rushed, yeah. So, 
Um, fortunately, we haven't had to make a lot of changes, but for the most part, we're kind of just focused on seeing what we can get done this season. Uh, so far, it's been going well. You know, we'll see how it continues, and then uh, working more towards the full regular season. Since uh, obviously that one will be a little bit more, I don't know, important. I mean, this is I like this season, but you know, it is obviously just more of a testing season for some of the SR changes that went through and and uh, name changes and whatnot for the teams. I think the name changes are always a little bit of fun. Um, what what are your thoughts there on the on the SR change? As before, they used to take your exact was it the exact, exact. peak average and then average across. Uh, yeah, was it peak? Yeah, it was peak. Uh, and then it was a peak. Oh, I'm trying to remember what the original when I first joined. I, I think it was peak of your highest, and that's what you counted. And then <clears throat> it was an average yeah. to like 2750 <clears throat> or something like that. Yep, I think I think it I think it was maybe even twenty five seventy five when I first started, and then the next season, which I believe was season three, it went up to, or maybe season four. I can't quite remember. But it, I think it started at twenty five seventy five, and then it went up to twenty seven fifty. So it's been it's been up in at increments, which is mm -hmm. nice to see. I guess that the talent overall of the league has been growing, and I guess I want to have uh, some stiffer competition, maybe. Oh yeah, I the special thing for the full season where you see people be able to develop as teams and make any swaps they need to make and all that kind of thing. You're gonna see some really really crazy team comes uh, come playoff time. Um, mm -hmm. Xerxes made a really good point. Cynical's actually not placed on his other two roles, which means he will not be eligible to play tonight, which is very unfortunate. Oh. Um, let's see. The Charlie MD. Good luck to everyone. Awesome, awesome. Alley later. I was on Dallas, now I'm on Atlanta, but usually play quick play comp with Boston. <laughs> nice, just playing around. Uh, they didn't let Sunless play on Dallas because he was not placed on Unrolls. Yeah, in one of our games, I forget who it was against, there was a couple players. Well, actually, <laughs> one of our players, so we will not speak of their hey. name, hey. <laughs> couldn't play the first game. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> uh... You know, I'm I'm looking at the lineup here for Hangzhou, and without Cynical playing on bronze, they might have some difficulty um, trying to bring down their their average their average team level here. Oh, Koski just said vouch. Then they changed rules today. What they change the rules to? Can you play now without? I don't think you can. No, yeah, you can. not well, fortunately for Hangzhou, we've got some uh, higher ups on the team, so they'll definitely know the rules probably a that, little more clearer I than we will. Is already a gold? No, Rudy's a plant. Oh, they no, are going to have trouble. They're going to have to pull in a sub, I think. Dead stock officially starts the timeout for Hangzhou. I guess they're kind of maybe strategizing here, trying to figure out what lineups they could actually run. Oh, maybe they... doing a rule check, too, to see what they can do. Unless they have somebody else. I know Maria can't make it tonight, which is their other gold support. And I, unless somebody else is just, like, that they can find of their team, they're going to have to end up getting a sub, which is... It could be okay, right? Like, a gold sub's not bad for support. Um, but it's going to mess up with their synergy a little bit, and if there's no subs available, then it could get spooky, because they, they, they have to have... Actually, no, technically they could bring in a plat, but then Deadstock would have... To, or somebody on the team would have to flex over to support, because uh, Bambi would not be able to play, which Bambi's Corey, by the way, for anybody who does not know. What did they change the rules? Uh, does anybody know, what, like, what's the what's the rule that's been changed? Do you not have to place all three roles anymore? Because I think that's very odd if they did make that change. Uh, Tub Sturt 19 thank you very much for the follow. Much appreciated. Tubster? I was, is that the same Tubster that used to be on Hangzhou back in the day? I think I remember that guy. Oh, yeah. He played Amin Arisa. What's up, Tubster? Is it is it the same one? I, I, it may be. I hope it is. I it's hope nice so. That'd be a real callback right there. I'm interested what this rule changes though. I didn't see it. I don't know. Oh, I think they did at me in Mal earlier today, and I just didn't have time to read it. Where was that? Was it in announcements? As for season now, that we will continue to use current peak until week one of the playoffs. It gives you probably three weeks to get your placements done. If you play sooner, we will get off the most recent placement. We are no longer required to place all three roles. You'll only be required to place your previous season high roll. Season's high roll and 
any other role you intend to play. Oh, okay. So yeah, you only, you only, you can only play the roles that you place. So that's good at least. I still like, feel like that's. So are you telling right me that I could have played? I I mean that somebody on our team could have actually played the game in first <laughs> week, and they uh, well, didn't fill no, all the roles. They just changed this rule as of like. <laughs> <laughs> two hours ago uh, unlucky well i mean i guess lucky for hangzhou if that is the rule change yes but i would assume because this is a week two game they probably can't run him because this would technically have happened i don't know how that works but i would assume oh yeah there's some like, time traveling rules going yeah. on here this is gonna yeah. get complex <laughs> so i i think for for the sake of consistency they probably shouldn't run him And I'm not sure, actually, I'm not even sure if this is for next season or not. It's kind of confusing. I'd have to read it more specifically. Because it says going forward, we will no longer require you to place all three roles. I don't know if that's going forward into future seasons or if that's going forward as of right now. Maybe uh, it'll be more clear as uh, as time goes on. That, that goes for the next season is what Xerxes is saying. Tubster, Arisa Zarya main. I want to get back to it. Yo, bruh. Yeah, that's your that, SR. Was, that was him. I, I remember him, and he, we were playing. Uh, that was on Arisa Sig, where yeah, the good old, the good old days of of what was it, fifteen hundred shield, eighteen hundred, whatever it was. Yeah, those were the days. Those were the days. He I had mean, some sick bowls. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know what your SR is. I don't know what you play and whatnot. But if you're looking for a team, you know, <laughs> hit us up. I, we have a lot of tank players, but you know, can never hurt. We can discuss it. And see what is up. There you go. Um, are they still they're still figuring out? Okay, so they got Reed. Reed, Reed made goal. it today. So yeah, I was looking yeah. at the Hangzhou roster, and they uh, it was it was Reed, Red, and Maria were their gold players. Yeah, so they're fine now. And three of them weren't here at the time, so I guess Reed was able to free herself up and and make it for the game. Awesome. That means no sub, which means they won't have to mess with synergy and and worry about finding that side. I would assume mm -hmm. they should be ready now. Cynical does need to be set to spectate the correct team hopefully they realize that but other than that you should be in good shape i do not know how to say your name but i very much appreciate the the prime subscription uh, how do you say that oh juso i uh, honestly Uoso? If, uh, i don't know uh, Uoso, <laughs> i i appreciate this uh, very much i also appreciate the follow um Thanks. You're getting those Twitch primes, nice. Yeah, dude. Do I, is, are you somebody from the league, or are you outside the league? I don't recognize your username necessarily, but um, as I said, I'm terrible with names. I'm a free agent on the Discord. All right, I will have to look at the free <laughs> agent rules again. Then is your name still the same in? Oh, because I thought I checked the free agents. I'll have to have a closer look. Or no, he probably has a free... You might want to put... Well, yeah, you probably don't have a post. So I looked through all the posts, and if you didn't post, then I probably didn't see it. Oh, I forget we're on a 45-second delay. That's why I'm so confused. I was like, what is happening with... Because <laughs> the people always respond, like, super late. And I was like, this is weird, dude. Um, Should I tell them that they need to put Cynical to spec the right team, or do you think they're going to figure it out? Um, I know Deadstock has had a few boomer moments in his lifetime, but maybe a little <laughs> friendly reminder to go a long ways. Love you, Deadstock. I'll, I'll hit him with a DM. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Um, the Charlie MD, thank you very much for the follow. Much appreciated. Hopefully, we'll get the game underway here soon and get some more exciting content. For the time being, I probably should start up some music. I don't know why I didn't do that earlier. Uh, what do we want to go with here? Do this for now. That's about all I have. And then I can queue up other stuff if it looks like it's going to be a minute. Yellow is AFK. Okay, well. Let's see. I want to pull up my stream elements. If I know yellow, he's probably taking a nap. Free on the how do I post? You should have access to a... Um, also, tell me if the music is too loud. Um, you should have access to the the free agents section, I would assume. And there's like a looking for team free agent post 
under the free agents tab and then you can go there and post otherwise you can just send me the information and we can see if it would even work and if you're interested that's always another thing as well um as i said we have four tank players right now but depending on your sr and uh what you play you know it might work out because we still have a couple extra slots on our roster um tubster gifted a sub to vex wow thank you very much i really appreciate that and uh giganti beans is that how you say that um also thank you for the follow uh you guys are popping off much appreciated really nice to uh see all the love even though we haven't even got to actually start the action yet but hopefully it'll live up to the hype once we actually get to go chat is popping off here tonight yeah chat's going crazy dude and a game is it xerxes and let's go leviathan says how did we say we were going to say that name? If you tell me how to say it, I will try and say it properly. That's a tricky one. There's too many vowels. <laughs> and it gifted a tier one sub to you. Oh my goodness, what is this name? Lycan Trigger. Oh my goodness, the names. Where are we broadcasting this? Sally <laughs> Stanley for Squanto. I appreciate the gifted sub though, guys. I truly it's do. Huge. It's It is very nice of you. Logan Relax <laughs> that says his name, which I I promise you I wish I could say it properly. Oh, they're hitting him with the R question mark, which means we are getting ready to go. Gonna get into some action here and hopefully get some uh, really good play here on Ilios, which um, we did talk a little bit about comps. I really think I'd be surprised if we didn't see like the, the at least the ball. And the Pharah, I could see some other picks maybe coming out, especially now that Cynical can't play. They can't run that Lucio. We're hyped for some Mao play, the Charlie MD says. I am also very hyped. It's been a long time since I've been able to cast, which means it's also been a while since I've been able to spectate a game live. So it is going to be really nice to get in and be able to watch this. Will you be sharing your stream? Oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> great names with bizarre names and follow. No, why do you bully <laughs> me, dude? Can't you just be like Ben and like Frank and stuff? That'd be a lot easier. Need some simple names. Okay. <laughs> oh, you guys goodness. are too advanced. Um, I'm curious, ah, man, because Reed comes in right, so I, I don't think Reed plays Lucio. Which I, what I was trying to say is that kind of messes with their. Actually, no. Actually I imagine I imagine they're gonna have a pharmacy here, especially on well. I think so. No, I would really be surprised if it's not. <clears throat> All right, and we're getting into the map. We already see Initiating nothing match. because that was not the actual start. <laughs> and I'm sure we'll get some baits here and spawn like you always do. Get to look out at the. Ilios, uh, what is this, Ocean? Oh, is, or is this, actually, where is, Ilios is, uh, Italy, right? So that'd be the, am I crazy? That's not, is that the Mediterranean? I can't think, dude. I used to know geography, and I'm, like, completely lost now. I don't think I'm the one to ask about that. <laughs> we do see a hog already, possibly? Nope, Zarya, and, and as we said, it is the comp that I called exactly. Ball hog. Lucio, Farah, uh, and then the uh, Tracer Mercy. Exactly what we thought. Sorry for the delay. No worries, dead stock. Um, yes, we are starting. Very hype. And I would... Yeah, okay. So we have the Ash from the side of London. But... Oh, and the Soldier. Okay, so they are expecting the fair, which I think is a... Double really hit scan. Look at their tank lane, though. We have a Hog Sigma. And then the Moira Lucio supports... I think Hot Sigma can still be quite strong. I agree, but Sigma's... I, I don't know, I feel like Sigma's kind of one-dimensional, whereas like a ball is going to get a lot of value from the disruption and just allow so much base. Like, look at look at the pressure they're already laying in with this pharmacy, and the ball is just distracting. A nice hook in from Red. Oh, Red's in. Okay, see, I didn't notice that swap. Yellow oh, two yep. kills yeah. already. Yeah, yellow just getting to work in Yellow's the back line off. here. He had just what has his ult here coming yeah. up, and his, the point isn't even capped yet. <laughs> He's gonna get a sick K, can he do it? Ah, oh, they steal his kills. Reddy has the barrage here, though. We'll see how he 
tries to get in position but use it here. I would assume he's gonna look for it super early. Yeah, Hangzhou really dominated that fight there. They've got three outs online, whereas um, Leviathans have zero. Well, and look at the so swap. So they're gonna that, be in trouble. Look at the swaps that Leviathan made too. I off the double hit scan, even though the oof. It, <laughs> there it is. The barrage comes out pretty early. Instantly deletes both their stuff. The That's really rough. They're just gonna get staggered here in this fight. I, I, I do you really see why they would switch over to this? Reaper when uh, fair is I really play? don't know. Yeah, the fair clearly dominated the first fight, able to get their out right away, and then they switched off. They switched off both. Maybe it was it could have been a communication error, although they didn't pick up the McCree. We'll see. Hopefully it works out. Maybe it was to contest the hog or the ball. Mm -hmm. And the ball is still just getting unlimited value. Look at this. Still full health after just running their whole team now. Uh, Petriar does pick off yellow, which is a really good pick, and I don't think the reds gonna be able to come back through. Nice stick from Endless, though. And Should Ball... be an even fight here. <laughs> Dude, look at look at Waffle. He's still just full health, just <laughs> rolling around in their team. That guy never dies. He's got mines kind of here again. It could be big. I don't. I, they don't even need it. Yellow's back in the fight. I don't think they do. And they've just cleaned it up. It was a nice pulse bomb by Endless that got that started for them. They win with the dry fight. They got a good stagger here at the end. Ooh, awfully falling low. He does go down, but uh, he's going to respawn so quick. Actually, he even gets a res. And this is... Uh, the, now, London does have some ults coming up, but... Uh, ready to lose one. It's 91%. They get a pick back, but the mine's in such a good position. I think it's desperation here. Time, time yeah. here now. They're popping off all the ults. They can't touch yeah. the board. Unlucky. Monkey tries to get the ult in, but he was just way too far away, and they had beat up. And this is what I was afraid of, especially on Ilios. Uh, this map is just so good for the comp you're coming to see from HD. And uh, a lot of these players have so much practice on this specific comp. Um, and I do think, uh, as we were saying, I think London has had a lot of swap-ups in their roster. And this comp really, really preys on, on, on teams that don't play around each other super well and don't have a, a real good game plan for a counter and uh, i think that's that's kind of what you saw them running into there where it was just it was too much chaos right they couldn't deal with the ball they almost it almost seemed like they were just just gave up on trying to deal with the ball like they didn't even seem like they were trying to use their stuns on it and then they it seemed like they wanted to focus down the hog because they went to reaper but then the pharaoh was just getting too much value and that's that is the strength of what he is is running greece oh that's what it is okay um, any other, let's see. We did just go, no we're dead side, could have a good clean game, take a while, then a scuff, quick game. And we did have somebody DC, it looks like Red had some problems, which I would assume he will be back because Yellow and Red are brothers, so they should be on the same internet, meaning should not be a internet problem, probably just a PC problem there. So I would assume, yeah, yeah, computer crash. So we should be in good shape. Um, in the meantime, did you have any thoughts about um, the comp that London was running, the tank line, and also like the the DPS switches that they made? Um, I thought maybe it was a little strange, although maybe they didn't want to devote both of their DPS to try to take down that Farah, um, tried to spread some damage around, but I think it kind of played even stronger into the comp of Hung uh, Hangzhou. Um, you know, they're very practice on that lineup. It really allows them to kind of flank and take all these weird angles and hit you from all six sides and kind of overwhelm them. And you kind of saw that right from the start. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I was trying to say with uh, saying that Sigma's kind of one-dimensional, right? Like, he wants to have that straight battle, like, face-to-face. He needs -face. a lot of protections on his on his flanks and on yes, his sides. And exactly. You're yeah. not going to get it against a ball and a fire, and it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be coming from everywhere. Yeah, he, he can block off maybe, like, the hog hook until his shield breaks, which it's not, honestly, that tough uh, to break. But then in the meantime, you, you've got the ball in the back line just pushing people out of position and throwing people around and the fair just in the sky. And uh, yellow kind of just disrespected them, right? Like, he just flew up, killed two of them that first fight, and then from mm -hmm. there just absolutely, you know, cleaned it up. And 
I, I think you're I think you're really gonna see that comp probably continue from HD until London can find some kind of counter to it, and hopefully they do. I do, I do think there are some specific comps that work well against it. I'm not necessarily gonna say it on stream because, uh, as some <laughs> of you may know, we have a game versus HD this weekend. Um, so if you're interested in watching that game, should be a a good game from from the scrim bucks. It's as, gonna as they're be called. a doozy. <laughs> um, Potentially one of the best games of the season, if I do say so myself. But <laughs> we uh, may be a little biased. We here, may but, be a uh... little biased. I mean, <laughs> that's giving HD a lot of credit, honestly. But you know, we'll yeah. see. I'm, we're hoping they'll give us a good game. <laughs> yeah, it should be fun. But yeah, I'm I'm really interested to see, and uh, it will actually be. <clears throat> and, uh, also, I think who was it? So it was Ship Shape. This is his. A debut to the league right so kind of a rough start but when i was looking at their profile i think they play mostly genji and it didn't look like a whole lot of hit scans yeah so they do have some hours on kree but genji looked like their primary character i think another option for them would be to just play to their strengths right you have two options you either try to play 100 percent to counter the enemy, uh, enemy comp and find something that works that way or you play 100 percent to your strengths and just try to you know play faster or uh, uh really pick off any of the vulnerable characters um that the enemy team has and and a lot of times then you know you might get some momentum in a series so i think right now it looks like they're just trying to make the adjustments to counter the enemy comp looks like back on a double hit scan um but i i do think they really should consider swapping up their tank line here yeah, it might be a little bit difficult to play Genji and do the comp that Hangzhou was was running, especially if it's, it's just a Genji trying to solo dive. They might not find the value they're looking for unless they're unless the team commits to a, a, like a full uh, Winston Diva dive or Winston Ball. Yes, yeah, so someone the... to dive in there with them. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think honestly, this comp in theory could work, but man, it is going to be rough for Monkey Happy on this Sigma here. Whenever he, you know, he gets up to point, because think about how many boops. The side of HDS. They got Waffling on the ball. They've got Pharaoh with Concussive Mind. They have Lucio Boop. They have Roadhog Hook. Like, what is he gonna do? I I don't envy. There's, there's a lot to play for the that. for the Sigma to have to worry about here. I, I really find Sigma can be this 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 glass cannon hero. He can he can d deal a lot of damage, but uh, he can really get overwhelmed quite quickly. Yes, 100%. Especially in his current state. I mean, if it was like release Sigma, maybe you'd have a better chance at it with his crazy one shot combos and his 1500 health, faster regening shield, and all that stuff. But, um, and I know they did some. They did some changes to kind of like even it out, right? Like his suck is faster, his whatever, kinetic grasp is a little yep, bit faster yep. now than it used to be. And does it give you more health or is it just faster? I forget. Uh, I'd have a look at the numbers. I'm not too sure, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I have not played Maybe. a lot of Sigma, so I just don't know. <laughs> I'm interested to see what uh, what adjustments they make here on Well. I find Well's a map that you it's kind of a mixed bag as to what you see. A recent mm -hmm. Hog you'll, you'll see a lot, but Ball can also be played. I mean, just from the one second that we saw, the Soldier Switch was the only one that they perhaps That's the only one that we that had a chance to come through yeah now let's see did we look at monkey's profile and see what they actually play usually okay so it is the reinhardt so i would assume yeah so i think sig yeah sig they also do play some winston so it's probably more of a comfort thing they probably don't play like the Risa. they probably don't play the ball so that can be a struggle but i almost feel like man it's hard to say because I was gonna say Reinhardt might be better off with the with the reduced boops that happen to Reinhardt, but yeah. the other side of that is, what do you like? What are you gonna swing on, right? Like their comp doesn't really have much to swing on. You're just gonna end up getting shot at the whole game. At least with Sigma, you can kind of poke back, but yeah. HG's comp is is hard to counter. It really is, and it's taken. Obviously, that was the comp that was ran in playoffs by GZ. Oh, which I played for last season. That's that's what we ran, and uh, it won the it won the whole season. So it's a, it's a very good comp, and it's very hard to counter. Is the bottom line, and I I think teams really, if they're gonna try and beat this comp, need to have prepared beforehand um, some strategies to try and unless you're just mechanically insane and able to like shut down yellow 
all the time and, and, and kill off Waffly on the ball and that kind of thing, I think it is a, a big struggle. Well, I think sometimes when you get overwhelmed like that um, by all the different, all the damage coming from all these different angles, sometimes uh, one of the best things to do is just to switch off to a comfort pick. It, it may not be like the, the, the perfect counter or, or exactly uh, coordinate with your team very well, but if, I mean, if, if it works for you, you gotta go for it. Exactly. And there always is the option to try and mirror match, but the problem with doing that against a team who knows how to run this comp and has been practicing this comp is you're most likely not going to be able to run it to the same level that they can. That's um, that's very true, especially especially against Hangzhou. They've been this, there's a, the core of this team has been together since day one, so they really play together well, and they've they've got tons of experience in the league. Yes. Now this pause is definitely building up the hype. At least, <laughs> let's hope so. If that's Looks how like it Anna works. Has settled off. <laughs> yeah, Anna's, Anna's just out. He's like, nah, I'm done with this. But the timeout is. Oops, I didn't mean to say that. Um, timeout does end in a few minutes here. So, <clears throat> at that point, unfortunately, HG will just have to roll out with what they have for the rest of this map, and then we'll be able to get there. Um, I would assume they bring in Rodeo again for the next map or Deadstock, um, because they will be able to run that roster. So it so they would have to play a five versus six here? Yes, they are not allowed to sub in another person to the end of the map. Until the end of the map and not the end of the round. Yeah, end of the map, yes. So they would have to finish wow. this entire map with a five v six. Which is very unfortunate well, for HD. But I, as much as that would suck, I do feel like, you know, they're up one map. It's actually potentially, oh, as it looks like, Red has rejoined the game, so we won't even have to worry about it. Just in the nick of time. Seriously, says I blame Deadstock. I blame Bambi personally. DDoS. Uh, ba Bambi's throwing. Yeah. She's DDoSing her own team. And DDoSing her own team. That's what I heard. <laughs> Alright, who do we want to watch first person this round for a little bit? I'm feeling. Uh, let's watch Waffly right off the bat. He's going to zoom. We'll just watch him zoom out of spawn, and then I can get a third person for a little while. As we're getting back into the action. No 5v6. No worries, boys. You guys a little bit behind, unfortunately. That's how it goes. That's he's trying to make a basket here. The Hangzhou lineup looks to stay about the same. Yeah, I believe they're saying they're they're six. They've the monkey happy has switched over to Reinhardt here. They've got a they've got a Mercy a Baptiste. Oh, Tracer yeah. Fair looks it looks like they're doing a lot of switches. I think they're trying to do their best to match the same comp as what AG is running, but AG is actually swapped over to the Echo as they get a pause coming in because I believe Bambi is throwing and is AFK <laughs> in the spot. If what I was watching was uh, correct, she seemed to be just standing there. She's probably eating a potato somewhere. <laughs> she is a potato, that's the problem. It's cannibalism. <laughs> just really are what you eat. We love Bambi, we just like giving her a hard time. <laughs> Speaking of hard time though, I feel like poor Monkey Happy is going to get bullied on this map, unfortunately. Yeah, it's got to be hard for him to uh, have a big effect here. The steadfast uh, will, you know, obviously prevent him from getting booped around a lot. But um, it looks, I don't know how effective his his short hammer is going to be against this, uh, you know, spread out uh, Hangzhou team. Yeah. Um. And another thing I was just thinking about is like. Even I, I like I kind of like the fact that they're trying to sort of match the comp, right? And, but they're also still playing their own strengths. They've got the Reinhardt, and then they got the Bap to support the Reinhardt. But the thing that I'm thinking is like, again, what I was saying earlier. It's like Shredder. Uh, no diss to the guy. I I, I know he's good. Um, I know Azari is very good. I have never seen him play DPS before, so this is the first time I'm even seeing him play DPS. Um, and now he's trying to take a matchup with the uh, previous season MVP. Yellow on Pharah, which is the character that he got MVP uh, of, of the finals um, last season for. So, uh, you know, a tall task, bottom line. Um, and it's going to be pretty much up to him to deal with it, unless his hog or tracer can somehow help him out a little bit there. But for the most part, he's going to just be taking the 1v1, maybe even a 1v2 with Endless here on the Echo to just 
press his E button if if Shredder gets hit once by a by a rocket and just absolutely delete him out of the sky. So kind of an unfair matchup, I feel like, but um, definitely interested to see what Shredder can do on this fair. Yeah, he's got he's gonna have a difficult game ahead of him here. Might see a few widow duels. Uh, sorry, a few, a few fair duels. I hope so, man. I love some Farah. I don't know if people remember, but I used to play some Farah back in the day, and uh, I still love to see it. I don't get to play it much anymore, um, mostly because I'm washed up and don't have the same internet I used to either. Which boosted. Yeah, yeah, I boosted myself, <laughs> and now I've feeling the betrayal. Oh, as Bambi actually. Oh, are they? Tapping her out? Looks like she got subbed out to show lobby. They are just gonna go 5v6 instead. All right, well, that is unfortunate. And we'll see what HG decides to run here. I would assume they're gonna swap Reed probably over to Mercy, maybe? Mercy or Mora, yeah, they're gonna switch to a Mora here. They only have the one support, so yep. they're gonna need as much as they can get. Which means yellow is going to be on his own against the pharmacy which does give shredder a much better chance in this uh matchup it'd be interesting to see how they play the solo support and where she positions herself for sure her life is going to be extremely valuable they do have the tracer to try to go after and apply a lot of tra apply a lot of pressure man you see how much respect london is still giving he though like they are just playing on their half of the point here not really pushing in even though they have the 5v6 they're still just waiting I guess for a pick, which uh, in some ways I guess makes sense because like they have a 5v6 so you'd think that they would be able to win as man red got a good flank up even got the hook but didn't quite get up by shredder actually takes down two winning the far battle endless does take him out but res is through and unfortunately that's where you're gonna see uh, this fight end and uh, that will be London with first control also a pulse bomb in their back pocket although endless is getting close to his copy which I would argue unless the pulse bomb hits a really good target uh, which most of those targets he can't really get to or can't kill then uh, I think the copy is gonna be a lot more impactful here yeah, I'm still questioning the Reinhardt pick here. I think if they had maybe a dive tank, it'd be it'd be, a, be able to play this a lot faster, a lot more loose. But uh, with the Reinhardt, they maybe have to play a little bit slow here. And let's go for an aggressive copy. Somehow, Ship Shape actually stuck yellow, which is very interesting. Looks like Bambi is back in the game. And the whole hog out for Endless doesn't get anybody. Point is still being contested. There's two hogs here on the point, though. Poor Monkey is just trying to live in this room here. Uh, nice hook onto Endless, but Endless gets away from Mercy Pocket. Bambi is now back, able to heal up her team. And there is a, yet another pause. Calling for another pause. This time for the side of... Um... I, I think they're going to question Core coming back uh, into the game here. I'm not sure what the rules say about that. For but sure. they, started at, they, they started at 5v6, and then she came back in the middle of a fight. I I do think that's interesting. I, I wasn't quite sure why they subbed her out out i guess they were scared she was gonna get dc'd for for uh afk but i i don't know i'm not sure how the rules work at that it looks like noctua who is the admin for the game is saying she's fine yeah she's the only one allowed okay yeah so they're good hey, it's uh, nice they came to a quick agreement and they're gonna start the game back up again exactly um also kind of bothered they called the pause right mid fight you're not technically supposed to do that but i guess they also had to join in mid fight um you do have valve going off for london and also they are coming up on a lot of us they have shatter they have the bat bolt about to have hoggle and tracer ult. um only coalescence hoggle and uh, ballo coming up here so this fight should be pretty chaotic although monkey is getting very low ship shape gets a pick but oh they are off the point and that will be a swap the point did for get flip and this can be staggers too. He needs to just. Oh, okay. They get a pick back, but I think this. Uh, in the end, yeah, gonna get booped in. Waffle with a nice boop there. And this is where I think this comp really struggles now, right? Because Farah is in her her position. She wants to be. She's in defensive. She's got a barrage. You have Waffle with the area denial ult as well. Um, so you're gonna see a, yet another pause happening yet again. <laughs> It is not mid fight. It's a long map. <laughs> it is not mid fight, so I guess technically it is allowed. Um, and London still has all their pause time besides 
few seconds here. Um, eventually, these teams are both going to be out of pause time. HD is already out, and uh, London is starting there now, which I think it is just the map timeout, and then you'll have the full timeout coming in after that if they need it. But man, I burnt through half my water already in this game, and we have not even gotten through the first map. <laughs> You're gonna have to switch over to some tea to get some energy in you to keep you up late tonight. Oh, bro, I don't know. I may just end up having to go get water mid match, which is rough. <laughs> I've got a little bit of reserves here. I should have filled up my uh, filter thing. But this is what I was saying is they're having to push in now, which is gonna be the, the real struggle. I think they really needed to invest their ults and keep control of that point while they had it. Because um, mm -hmm. now coming in, the ferret just gets to spam you on your way in. The echo gets to spam you. The ball gets to disrupt you the whole time. You're trying to push, look for boops, um, and it's gonna be it's gonna be hard. Like who you're gonna lock down with your shatter, right? Maybe the ball, and they just try to get that pick off. Um, Hoggle's kind of similar. Like you're probably just going to maybe solo ult the ball if you get a good hook in. And Bappled is almost worthless in this comp. You can give it to your Cree and hope that he kills their pharmacy, but. Their ults aren't looking great for coming in here, and uh, both Yellow and Waffly um, have really impactful. Waffly, you know, the the ball ult can be uh, can be really strong, or can be kind of meh, depending on how it's placed, what, what part of the fight. But the area denial is undeniable, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, they also have the coalescence, which is just so much sustain. Like if their Roadhog gets hooked in, and even like if they try to solo them, coalescence can probably keep him up through that. There's no anti to, to really counteract that. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how these ults come out. I'm really interested in uh, Monkey Happy's uh, Ryan alt here. I mean, you have you have three players on Hangzhou who are essentially in the air in the Echo Fair and and Mercy. Uh, Moira is so shifty, she just turns invisible and she can avoid the shatter, so he, ball's really fast. I think he's going to have a hard time to get any value to the shatter. I'd, I'd like to see it really come come out really early. Um, hit at least one. I think that would be the best case scenario, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's going to be a challenge to play that here, especially on well. It's a big gap in the middle. It's it's just it's just a, it's a hard ultimate to get that value off here. Mm -hmm. I think this comp would do a lot better on the next map, so if they can manage to like take a fight here, uh, and win it and then get control and maybe pull off this map. I think they have a much better chance on the next map, but I think they're going to really struggle on this push. And you see Yellow already setting up with the Mercy Pocket, looking for this barrage. He's going to go for a flank barrage here. Oh, can they get the Immort out in time? That's the question. The BAP should see him here. He decides not to go for it, though, which I think is a smart idea. That's a good idea, yeah. Nice patience there. And he gets picked off. Yeah, that's a huge pick, especially if they can deny the res. Shatter here. This is this is where you shatter. Win this fight. I I would 100% have tried and just take out both those tanks there. Ooh, a huge copy onto the Reinhardt in the back. He is going to get such a fast shatter. Here it comes. Gets blocked. A nice hook. Echo will end up killing two. Absolutely huge man. Let's see. Actually killed three there, especially... Um, and that will swap this fight run. That's what I was saying. You needed it in uh, yellow comes There's in to clean the up barrage. barrage. Uh, yeah, and I really think Monkey Happy needed to invest that shatter whenever both tanks were sitting there. He could have gotten rid of the minefield as well as locking down both those tanks in position. I think his team could have cleaned up off that. And now you're looking at 80%. They have to win this fight. Yeah, they're really playing against the clock here. They pretty much have no other choice but to try to force them th their way on the point and they can take a lot of damage here from Hangzhou. They are taking a good route, but they have no speed, so they just take so much bam on the way in. Monkey still has the shatter, has not chosen to invest it yet. High noon does get the fair up, but the ship shape is down on the tracer, and the res comes through and not able to be denied. Monkey goes down with the shatter once again, and man, red with a huge whole hog should just clear up this point. As yeah, with hook off as well. He tries to get the revenge hook. A nice stick from ship shape, but it's it's 1v6 here, and the yellow will just end up clearing that up. Shatter comes out, but way too late. And <laughs> unfortunately, that will just be the end of the map there, as uh, HE will take the first map after quite an eventful, um, eventful meaning pause-ridden <laughs> map. Um, Must have been one of the longest map in uh, Mock Overwatch League history. It, it's definitely got up there, that's for sure. This was a huge play here from Endless. Even though the shadow got blocked, he ends up getting that. Ah, oh, just absolutely nasty there. And 
Anyway, Nine Loaded, thank you for the follow, and Yeet Damim, also, thank you for the follow. Much appreciated. And uh, we also had a couple highlighted messages. Uh, Hi, Mad Circle and Swanky Pants and Storm Gig. And also said they love Dab Master Pog Jam. Um, <laughs> true. Uh, let's see. Anything else important that I missed in chat? Oh, so <laughs> where was that? I just saw it out there corner of my eye. Somebody had said, pause counter greater than the follower counter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That's hilarious. HE built different. I agree. HE has always been a very strong team, and I think they will continue throughout this uh, season to be a very strong team. Uh, honestly, they're, in my opinion, at the, from the teams that I know, probably the second best team in the league right now. Um, of course, not quite up there with Florida Mans yet, but, you know, with some practice. They, <laughs> <laughs> they could always dream. They could always, yeah, they can dream, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, Pixel Cat. 1995, thank you for the follow. Much appreciated. And of course, we're joking. We are very biased. Both of us are on Florida Mans. Once again, for those who didn't hear earlier, we will be playing HE this weekend, Sunday 8 East. Don't miss that game. Should be, hopefully, a very good game. Which way it'll go, who knows? Uh, we are a new team. They are more of an established team. They've always been a very strong team. So it's possible they beat us, but I think not. It's going to be a banger. <laughs> Should be entertaining at the very least. If nothing else, just come for some good old fashioned head clicking. They are asking for map currently. What do you think if you are London, what map type do you or like what do you think they take them to? Um what what's what is the what is the map type that's being played next? It seems uh... like they really wanted to go brawl here. They almost kinda of tried to force it. Yeah. So I think it's got to be a Reinhardt map. Um, obviously, King's Row King's is, is a easily number one candidate for that. So that'd be nice to see. Yeah, that is 100%. That Row. was my that was my first thought. King's Row, right? Because, like, yeah. Ball struggles, Ferris struggles, all that comes. So they're going to have to run a different thing. Now, I think if they go King's Row, you probably see, like, Dead come in to run the Zarya. Um, and then you can see uh, Yellow on, like, a Doom or a May. And I, I still think you're going to run into a very tough lineup. Uh, Bambi can play that. Uh, Bambi slash Corey, depending on the name you want to go by, can run that uh, Ana if they want. And Moira, the Reed can run the Lucio. You've got uh, Endless, I think, can play the Reaper, possibly. And then, of course, you have Waffly on his signature Reinhardt, which was the original character he was known for. So still a lot of really strong points for the HD side. You do see Ana come in for... Um, London, but he just got swapped in for Shredder, which means he is perhaps running DPS instead of his uh, usual pick, which is the Ana. Now, he is at 2946 DPS from his current season, so oh. definitely not bad there. So maybe that will be able to help them out. Yeah, they got some versatility to flex between the roles there. Mm-hmm. And you did see Monkey really wanted to try and play that Rhine. So uh, I, I would assume that would be a good map for them. We did see Patriar. I still don't quite know how to say that name. But uh, they were running the Hog the whole time. And it does look from their profile that that is their main pick. Although Diva in all modes is at least their most played. But it does not look like they have much time at all on Zarya. So... That may be a struggle if they go to more of a brawl centric uh, map type. Looks like we're going to be playing on Hannah Mora. Definitely nothing wrong with a little bit of Ryan's area here, especially on point one. Oh, for sure. Uh, even a, a Roadhog can be very strong on both attack and defense as well, mm -hmm. if that's what they're mm -hmm. wanting to, to go for. Um, Bambi in the chat says, Who said I was scuffed? I'm pretty sure everyone in my chat said you were scuffed, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Both casters and all viewers. <laughs> and everybody also blames you for all the pauses. Too many potatoes, Mambi. <laughs> you pick Rialto if you're London? Never choke the map once. No, you do not at all pick uh, Rialto. That would be an absolute terrible mistake in my opinion. But, I mean, if they wanted to, then for sure go for it. But I don't think... Farrah can be pretty strong. Farrah is really be so strong, strong against the air. 
here. Yes. Fair and Echo can be played on Rialto for sure. And uh, now you do have Ana coming in who potentially might be a better hit scan than Shredder. Um, just based off, you know, they play Ana, so maybe they, you know, then they are a pretty high plat DPS. Right. But ooh, I do kind of like what I'm seeing here. Now who, so we have London on the attack with sim somber never mind i thought i was gonna like what i saw but i'm seeing a mercy i'm seeing a symmetra i'm seeing a somber i'm sure hope this is not what they're running out with it's a bit of confusing a uh, bit of a confusing comp here i assume maybe they want to kind of teleport onto point they do swap over to the ash here which still doesn't quite make the most sense if they're going to go for that tp I guess we'll have to wait till they finalize the yeah. picks. They're kind of doing a lot of swapping. They're doing a lot of swapping. But look at what HG is running. Another very, very similar comp, except they've swapped Five. for the Ana Four. for the defense because they don't think Three. they need the speed anymore. And they've also swapped over to One. the Genji instead of the Echo slash Tracer. You see, I don't I don't really like the, the Ana pick here. I don't think it's absolutely necessary. I think they want to go with high mobility, and, and I think the Lucio is where they want to be. But we'll see if it works out. Oh, and I did not notice that actually Ship Shaped here is on to where is he on to the zarya, the zarya. Which he was playing the dps last round so yeah that is a swap up as well and also patriarch is on dps instead of the off tank so they are swapping a bunch of roles as patriarch does get the pick off onto bambia a very huge pick for their team and they uh, come to the point here to contest it's gonna be hard oh. for uh Hung joe to come back oh they do like a huge two picks on the dps both dps down chip shape does end up getting the the pharah but he gets slept Ana is still up here, which is good for them. They get the anti onto the Roadhog, but man, I, I really think they're going to struggle. Zarya is fully charged, so it is possible, but nah, with the Ana going down, the Sombra is just coming back now, but there's no heals left. They need to take down that Genji. That'd be a huge pick for them. Reddy has the Blade as well, but yeah, Ship Shape goes down. Blade comes out just to clean up this fight, and Endless just ends it before it even can get started again. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I think they were just three or four percent away from the nano. They could have had the the nano Zarya at 100 percent energy. It would have been maybe enough damage to uh, secure the point there, but it went down a little bit early. They got picked uh, off. And I really think London is really struggling a lot because they don't want to run the Lucio. And I think against the Pharah and against like a like the comp that. Um, HE is running, you need the Lucio to be able to speed in as Endless just gets a pick off onto the Ash in the back line. May get Noctua as well. Endless just absolutely farming here in the back line. Gets uh, three picks if you count the, the same pick twice. And they will have to reset again as he is still just pressing. Look at his ult charge already. Not even a full fight has happened yet. He almost has another blade. He's almost got a second blade. He's really popping off. Yeah, the um, their supports the the supports were getting really pressured there in the back by Endless, and their tanks kept pushing forward, and they eventually just died to the Genji. Mm. Gonna take a 1v1 with the Sombra here. Forces out the Translocator. And ooh! What an absolutely nasty assassination there. And I think you're going to see Endless do a nano blade here before his second blade, by the way, before uh, eight, or uh, London even gets to use one of their ults. I mean, he is just absolutely destroying here in the back line. Yeah, London really needs to try to get out here and stabilize. Big EMP comes in. It's free. Yellow gets taken down as well, but nano blade. Gets hacked and grabbed. Could be a big grab. Will end up going down as Monkey gets two pickoffs here. Let's see what kind of uh, space that they can make here. Looks like they're, uh, the, the red is going to push them back onto their own point. Yeah, onto, the, onto the point. That's not really where you <laughs> wanted to push them to, but. Um, Usually you try to push them off the point. But... Will Yellow try and clutch this here with the barrage? I very much doubt it. I think he will just end up. You might want to save it. Yeah, there you go. As Waffle will be here a little late. Bit. That could be a nasty stagger if they're not careful. He but needs to really die right now. If he if he dies early, he'll get the uh, immediate respawn. But it looks like yeah, he's got he, him safe. He juked out, got all the way back, and they Few, will be just fine. over 100 health left. Monkey well, does have the shatter again. He didn't get to use it last map. Maybe he's been saving it for this map, and it's going to be huge. You just never know. <laughs> get the early pickoff. Pick, though that's brutal. I don't think that's a push here because they have nothing to do. Yeah, they have nothing for yellow now. Uh, I don't like that they're still pushing in. This is this can be really rough. Red gets a pick on their Ana, and yeah, this is all. You want to go down? Yeah, I think this is the last fight. You definitely don't want to invest the ults here. 
HE did use Valk, but Valk builds up pretty quick. Not necessarily the, the scariest ult to not have, right? Like, they're not going to be too worried about having to use that. They still have the Barrage. They're coming up on yet another Blade, as well as the Minefield. Um, and for the other side, they just have Bob and the Shatter. I do think Bob can be extremely good on this map for just pressuring the point. Um, and if Reed happens to not have sleep, as Ana does get a pick up on the red, that's really nice. Uh, if they don't have sleep up, they, that Bob can actually get a lot of value there on the point and can make a lot of space for this team. Once again, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I'd like to see the uh, Leviathan regroup here and send a Bob in on point and press in yes. while they have the, uh, the man up. They're I playing agree. a little bit slow here and trying to regroup. Uh, I really think Monkey just needs to look for these solo shatters. Like right here, just shatter that ball, right? Um, you're never going to get a huge shatter against uh, HG's comp, so you need to just get a pick off. Comes the Genji with Blade, gets a quick Blade, two. Yeah. Endless just once again cleaning them up. And this right. this is just a struggle now. Now they do have a lot of ults for London. So gonna have six, although, to although Hangzhou is going to have four as well. I think it's going to be whoever ults first here is going to yeah. win. Hangzhou is going to want to have uh, use an early ult here. See if they can get it, go up one or two. Oh, I did forget to update the score. I'll do that after, uh, hopefully between rounds. Um, yeah, I really think the I think the struggle London's having is they're not willing to solo ult, right? They have all these ults, but they feel like they need to get a lot out of their ult instead of just getting securing like one or two kills and so they're just they're playing it so slow they don't have a lucio and, and he's just going to build up their ults and they're going to use them again and they don't care if they sell the ult they get a pick off they're going to win the fight right and now london has to reset all over again that yeah, was not yeah, even a single ult now. they got really got to get out yeah, a good dry fight a good disciplined oh. dry fight there from Joe. yep yellow just absolutely taking space on this map right up into this bond no fear Yellow just, again, it gets pressured out, but I mean, they're back to where they started, and now HG has <laughs> almost five ults again, so they all can almost match ult for ult. They survived the Grab the Grab. They're using I think everything. At this time. But they still do have the shatter. Monkey's been saving the shatter for two maps now. He does kill the Roadhog with it. Absolutely go. huge pick. And uh, they end up taking the map. 21 seconds left with the Nano Boost in reserve. To be fair, Hanamura's got to be one of the more difficult maps to push on, especially on attack. Point two, I mean, it can be pretty brutal. Point one, that there's that obvious choke. It's it's just a hard map for the offense, um, especially maybe if you're a little bit uncoordinated, if you're a little bit of a newer team. I know uh, uh, London does have some new players here, although they might not be in on this on this map. But against the experienced Hangzhou, it's it's going to be really difficult to try to push them on Hanamura. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and honestly, capping both points, you'll take it, especially with time left. That means you get, no matter what, they will get another attempt at this. Even if HG rolls over with six minutes, they'll at least still have that hope um, to be able to come in and maybe like get a, a lucky double cap. Um, mm. But I, I'm i feeling like uh, Lasagna Overwatch. Thank you very much for the follow. I do appreciate it. And uh, also Pixel Cat. No, I already said that one. We good. Um, don't get credit twice. <laughs> no, no double credits for you guys. Just kidding. Um, I, I, they need to find a way to be able to shut down yellow and endless at the same time. As you're seeing, endless get a lot of value, and then yellow, like when endless wasn't popping off, then yellow was popping off, right? Um, and the and the space that's being created by these tanks, they ha like how are they going to stop Waffly from just rolling in and getting on the point and making them fall back, right? Uh, these are the kind of be hard. yeah they have to answer some of these questions. HE is just asking them questions, and, and London is struggling to find answers right now. You can't save up six ults uh, to defend here, unfortunately. Yeah, they're going to have to use them really proactively here. I'm surprised they didn't go with the somber pick. They teased it at the beginning on attack, but they don't want to go with it on uh, on defense here. As Red already picks off the Tracer, and as I said, Waffly is already pressuring the point. And look at this pressure coming in. Endless, just right in their faces, putting in damage. And of course, Yellow sitting in the back, just getting to clean up this fight. And this popping off again, get three more kills. Exactly, I, and I'm all charged 60%. 
They will end up finishing off this fight. Endless still charging up that ult. Um, Although uh, Ship Shape was able to survive for a long time there and got 70% to a grab. I'm truly. sure it'll, uh, it'll come out on point two here. Yeah, Ship Shape Zarya's actually looked very, very good. Um, he's been able to survive a long time and charge up grabs pretty quickly. But I I think just in the composition that they're playing against, it doesn't matter all that much. I really like the positioning of the Ana here, played by Reed, staying back at the choke way far away from the point and healing, being able to heal the team from safety. Mm -hmm. I think oh. this is a very well coached support line. And look look at Ana. They've swapped over to the Kree, zero ult charge. And um, really, they're going to be looking for this grab pulse bomb. Is I think they have to get that up in this fight, and they have to get it up early because HE's already almost got that nano blaze and the barrage. Here and comes Ooh. Oh, sorry, the, the, the blade oh. knocked around. He gets two. Both supports two with one sweep. Yellow will clean up the rest, and it does look like this is going to be a really fast map. Grab and Pulse Bomb are up, though, if they can get enough stall, but the mines are out. Lucio will get a touch. Immort is out for a little bit more stall time. Can they get this grab online? Ball comes in, clears out a lot of the mines. Ship Shape is looking for it. It does land. Where's the Pulse Bomb? Oh, uh, can't quite make it there in time. Pulse Bomb comes out. Does get the pick. Very chaotic fight here on point. They need to get that mercy down if they want to win it, though. Uh, Endless is just relentless on this Genji. Again, the positioning from the Ana from Hangzhou back safe on the high ground. Yeah, and, and she needs to be contested. Yes, just sitting there with yellow. The mercy does go down. Bambi gets picked off. Ana is back on the soldier and also gets read. Both of their supports are down, and it looks like London will actually end up holding here with 77.9%. Very good hold. As uh, ship shape found a little bit of uh, spark here. Their, their ship shape switched to the monkey the and monkey, then was able to exactly. recognize the Anna and, and realize that's who he had to contest. Really good job there. Yeah, I was taking a kind of a weird angle, so I didn't get to see how the back line there got picked off. Um, but it must have been ship shape as he now goes over to the hog and Anna goes over to the May. But look, they had no longer have a hit scan cool. at all. Man. Nice hook. They are running the ball hog now. They are trying to match the tank line. Not, this, not the DPS line necessarily. Yellow though gets Ana right off the bat and that's a huge pick. A lot of stall potential going down as Yellow pushes their uh, the enemy Ana back into spawn. Monkey does have mines though. Very good stall ult if he can survive here. Double mines on the point. Beat from Noctua. Nice hit. Huge hook. From ship shape onto the yellow to pump into the mines, but endless once again with this blade. With three picks waiting for the May to come out. Can't quite get the pick. Does end up getting the pill though. And now it's just the tracer and the hog. Ball is back. But they're dying. Can they get a pick off again? They need to be able to get this on on the high ground like they did last time. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think they need to have a dive tank up there contest, but then they don't have anyone else to contest the point. It's, it's going to be a. Uh... Yeah, that, that's the end of the round. Yeah. Hangzhou is just too much. How much we got? What, what's the time left? The, yeah, 331, 3.31 in the bank for Hangzhou. Yeah. A pretty good time. That is a very good London's time. London's time goes up to one minute. London will get one good push. Possibly two pushes if they really die fast, reset, and... Uh, but it's still going to be a staggered push. They're going to have to send somebody in to try and touch. Whereas HG will get three, four, maybe five pushes if, if things go poorly for them. Yeah, they've got quite the uh, significant advantage here. And it's like I was saying before, right? HG gets to ask those questions and they have the time to ask those questions um, of London on the uh, when London is gets to, onto their defensive round. And London has to have the answers. And not only do they have to have the answers for the comp that HG's been running, but now they have to have the answer for something like this, where HG's swapped it up. They've gone their own Rhine Zarya, <clears throat> and they have the May. So totally different. And I think you're going to see that catch um, London off guard, right? They're, they're expecting a totally different comp. They're expecting what they've seen this whole entire game. And now they're running into something that is just so different. I don't, I, with one minute, to, they really need to reset quickly. They may even need to switch right off a of spawn, but I, I don't really see them doing that. It's gonna be very difficult to attack here with Yellow on the May. Yellow's such a good player. He plays that Doomfist is so annoying. He plays the May. It's really annoying. 
The Pharah, yeah, he, he <laughs> Yeah, is, it's uh, really hard to go up against Yellow. Exactly. So, he already gets, gets a pick off. Right a nice leap on a Waffly, but Endless once again in the back line. And Endless does go down as Monkey uh, will get pinned, will be low. Octu gets picked off. Rez comes in. That means it's a... Uh, they have 30 seconds. They do get another fight, and they have swapped over to full dive. But, you know, I gotta give credit to Yellow there on that play. He put the wall up right in front of the Anna's face, and mm -hmm. that all the all the heels were cut off to their team, and they were able to pick off one and two and just clean up the fight. Yeah, really smart. Pretty smart player. The dive onto the point, but it's just the tanks right now. The DPS aren't quite there with them. The ball is low. We'll get pinned, taken down. Winston's getting close to his ult, but I just don't think it'll come up in time. And Endless once again with the blade in the back line. And we've seen this before, we're going to see it again, and that will be the defense for HD. Yeah, and this really popped off in this map. Every, he seemed to build his blade in every every team fight, he pulled it out and got three more kills. Man was pretty much unstoppable there. Mm -hmm. And here's the problem, right? HD needs one tick. They can run any comp that they want in the game, and London has to be prepared to not only win one or two fights but they have to win against potentially what he could do is just big up build up six ults on whatever comp they possibly want and and then push for one tick and uh, last time we saw them cap with on their very first fight in in very dominant fashion so i think if you're if you're london you're really looking to pull out something different and you already see possibly the bastion could be a I, was, I, was really hoping to see, I was really hoping to see a mercy here. Um, even if even if Hangzhou comes in and loses the fight, but just gets the one pick, then they their their next recontest, they'll fight at six v five due to the long spawns here. So I think the bat's pretty wise. I I'd like to see mercy. Maybe they don't have a mercy player. Who oh, well, knows? Right Noctua does play mercy. Here. I I think what their their idea in their head is they have to hold for a long time so they're playing a bastion and they have to survive a genji blade which is what they're expecting a nano blade right so they're running the zen but as i said hg can run any comp they want and they are choosing the teleporter strat which i don't necessarily think will work here but if it does uh, you know that's gonna be rough but they have so much time to switch that i'm not even really worried about it yeah, they're really gonna play to play the uh, play the time bank here. I think they maybe maybe they were expecting a bastion, so they went with the uh, sim may to try to move around the map and get a better better angle. And they will get the teleporter up. No, nope. HE will not get the teleporter up where they wanted it to be. They will instead TP and take this rotation, which is really smart. They're not taking any spam from the bastion. And London's like, oh, where'd they go? Where'd they go? As HE is coming across, they have that speed boost, which is what we talked about. They take a lot less spam with it, and now look where they are. Yeah, you really, on defense, you really want to see the uh, the, the Sim set up a, a, a teleporter here so they can get the Bastion out, out of the way if, mm. if they get pushed on, but it's, I, don't, I don't see it. They are completely surrounded now, and the Bastion gets pinned immediately, taken down before the Immort can come out. They do trade it back. Ana does have the Symmetra, trying to get it charged up. So many turrets. The Freeze coming out, though. Monkey does get a pick back, but man, you got a May and a Sim on the point now. You're really gonna struggle in this situation, and it's just a Zenyatta here. Very sad, trying to to frag out, and uh, ball will come out from the Symmetra, and that will be map two going to HG once again. Yeah, they're really successful in uh, in surrounding the Bastion there and getting the early pick on the the main source of their damage, and from there, uh, London just wasn't able to to stay alive. Play the game. Endless with the play of the game. Yeah. Not surprised. This could have been one of four or five blades. I don't. This wasn't even a blade. This was just this clean fight that yeah, I was talking about earlier. Yeah. Kills the Ash. Kills the Mercy while resing, and then immediately comes back and kills the Ash again. Seventy-three percent. Endless looking scary on that map. And I think it's interesting, right? I. London, I believe, are running players that they're not, like, aren't aren't what you would expect to be a DPS player, right? Like, they may play DPS, but I don't think they have a specific player on their our team right now that plays the DPS. Like, you saw that a they've DPS been... DPS specialist. Yeah, whatever. they they've been swapping tanks to, to DPS. They've been swapping supports to DPS. And not to say that they've done poorly, um, 
but it, it's just really hard to ask somebody who that's not their main role to go up against um, two very strong DPS, as we know, um, like Yellow and like Endless, who that is their main role. That is what they practice. That is what they play. Um, especially, you know, Yellow being Diamond, Endless being very close to Diamond. I believe he was like, let me look. This is profile on privated. Yeah. Yeah. Within within 11 SR of being Diamond. Ooh. Um, so that is, yeah, that's a hard ask um, on the side of London. We'll see if they make any big swaps here at the end. But Yeah, uh, it's going to be difficult for them to uh, try to answer that calling to beat the DPS of the Hangzhou. And they go to Junkertown. Interesting. You know, Hangzhou, I don't know what Endless plays. Um, I, I know Yellow doesn't really play a sniper. Maybe they could be looking to pull in a double sniper here, a ball hog of their own, some speedy supports. Maybe they just like Junker Town. Who knows? It's true. It's I mean, it'd be interesting to see what comp they play. Exactly. I feel like it may be for a Bastion. They may be looking for some cheese. They may think that's their only way to get it done. And Junker Town used to be a very good place to do that. But I think, if I remember right, Endless can play. I mean, Tracer is really good against it, right? Um, I know Yellow plays a Farah. Farah is pretty good against Bastion in, in, under the right circumstances and if played well. Mm -hmm. uh, Ball Hog can both be good. I think you're going to struggle in that comp. And we really haven't seen a lot of snipers from London. And then when they have played it, they've just they've gotten destroyed, honestly. Like, Yellow will just roll up on the fa with the Farah, or Ball will come in and, and pile drive them, and it's just it's a really difficult. So while I think this map potentially could be... Um, used well for the double sniper. I don't think London really has the lineup to really see that be successful. But um, they may have some other strategy, or maybe uh, we just haven't had a good map that they felt comfortable with a double sniper yet, and uh, that could be their plan. I guess we'll find out here now in a few seconds. <clears throat> I also think HG, with the roster that they have in, right, they, they like that ball hog, and they like the... Farah, so they could just swap into like a full dive type of thing against the double sniper, which is gonna be really strong as well. Defensive, yep. See it already. And endless onto the Hanzo. So a sniper of their own, as well as the same regular comp, except that it looks like endless is like their flex player, right? For the most mm -hmm. part, everyone else kind of sticks to their own roles, and then endless kind of just fills in that, that last slot. I guess ship shape will be on a tank here for London. I'm still waiting his pick. He looked so really pick. good last map on tank. Um, Rosario was really, really strong. They were. I think I, I'm pretty sure they were getting their alts uh, pretty much faster than anyone else in the game. I know for sure they had really high energy, but they will come out on the Sigma here. I don't really like the Sigma. We talked about that earlier, but um, he is but, a bit better on Chunker Town, I, I believe, than he was yeah. on, uh, on Elios. Ana here. Walter, unfortunately, died early, but he's back in time for the fight to start. And this with the first pickoff on the widow. And Ana. Ooh, uh, they do get red down though, and Waffle is in here really deep. Yellow is coming into the back line though. This is, could be scary. He's not being a death right now. Although Ana is back on the Widowmaker. Fair getting pressured back. On a... Just playing the card here, trying to push it as far as they can. But look at look how far back oh, Ana's having to play. Or you Mario. see Waffly right into the spawn of London here. Absolutely spawn camping. <laughs> and, and this means Yellow just gets to play for free. Look at Yellow. He's just out here just shooting people. Because uh, he doesn't have to worry about the hitscan from the enemy team. Although, Absolutely. oh man. They are getting picks though, and they're actually getting good card push here. I think Farah, yeah. uh, Yellow really needs to, to continue getting these picks off quickly, and it's not quite happening yet. Waffly's back, that means Ana is probably now free on the Widow, wherever he ends up being. He's still playing so far back in spawn though. I don't know if that's going to work out for them. Yeah, it needs to be a little aggressive here, take some more sharp angles. Sigil coming out. Ooh, will not catch anyone, and oh, Petriarch goes down. In mid ult to the uh, ball. Nice rock onto the Farah from Ship Shape. But I think they're going to have to reset this fight here, and it's going to be probably a pretty brutal straggler. Can they deny this res? That would... Oh, what a hook! Oh, 
That oh, was the, ridiculous. The, the ult from Red just pushes him just off the off the cliff. Yeah, it was finished yet, but that was that was quite the hook. That was a nasty hook. I'm glad I got to see that kind of in first person. It wasn't from the hog perspective, but it was from ship shape. He was right there watching it. Um, they will swap over to the Winston now. I'm assuming to try and take care of Endless on this Hanzo. Winston does struggle against the, the Hog though. Nice hook from Red. Will not get the pick though. Shield invested from Ship Shape. That means I have to play a bit slower. Sights up. Endless playing very aggressively, looking for a pick here. Onto the Widowmaker. Almost gets it. We do have Barrage and here for Unjo. I think we'll see one of those pretty early. I, I would assume the barrage is going to come out here. He's, I think he's looking for it. He is arrested. Here's the barrage. Oh, just gets the one. Gets one, but I, he'll deny the res here. Yeah, and they will clean up that fight. Clean up. Uh, this was my worry, right? Ana's trying to play this. Um, Widowmaker on the attack, but he's having to play so passively because of the ball, because of the, the Hanzo. You know, if one of them's not looking at it, the other one is. If neither of them are looking at it, Yellow just rolls up and, and with his Mercy Pocket and kills him. And now that uh, Widow has been nerfed, it's, it's even harder than it used to be to deal with all this pressure. Yeah, this is a very, very difficult comp to play against. Ooh, nice hook from Take Red. Take out of the air! Comes Monk. the dragons. Yeah, dragons won't give like much, but positioning, and once again, yellow takes out yeah. Ana on the ash. Petriard does trade one back, but yellow gets a boop off the map, and they get the res onto red. So they need to reset this very quickly. They get one more fight. They have three ults now. Um, Waffly with the denial ult, though, of the, uh, on the point, he can drop these mines. And uh, with the way the time's looking now, if one more pick comes through, London's really going to struggle. And they're still going to struggle because they have to get the point and those mines are going to be in the way. Yeah, I was going to say, it looks like the monkey's going to have to all just a touch within five seconds. If the mines are out, cut to uh, cut off the choke. They did cut off the choke. They do a nice, uh, but a pick on the Noctua though from yellow. This is going to be rough. They keep, Rick gets another pick. Shipwreck does get a pick off. Hoggle comes in. Oh, boops the people away from the Reaper roll, which is kind of unfortunate. Nice boop off the card. Waffle gets a pick. They get a resin on the red, but trays are coming through. And respawns are... Yeah, the, the respawns are a bit faster for London here. Nice hook, but it's not the... Not the cleanup. They need to take out the healers here. They need to take out that Lucio while Mercy's in Valk and then kill the Mercy after. Another mines from Waffle already up onto that. He is farming those mines so quickly. Right, look at him, he's just spinning. He's still full health too. Barrage comes in, gets one, but does get shut down. Oh no, but the picks are coming through here. 4 HD. Waffly with two more what picks nice off mine. with the mines. A third, yep. Just the tanks here now. And monkey about to have his ult. Oh, there's the big monkey ult. Uh, uh, gets taken down. <sighs> I, I, I really uh, feel like fortunate. they actually could have potentially taken that, right? Uh, but the, both supports are alive, both tanks are alive for HE. And um, there was like, I think four or five people alive for London and they didn't take out that Lucio and and the Mercy was in Valk, so they had a, there's just a lot of sustain there and, and then it ends up coming back. Waffly gets off of nice mines. You, you have to stay on cart and they don't quite clear out on the mines and two people end up going down to that. And that's, that is just a brutal fight there. Um, nicely played from the side of HG. I, I, you know, some really good ult usage as we saw Waffly blocking off the first choke with mines. Um, that Valk coming in the last fight to sustain the takes. Um, and then and then another mines on the cart to really just finish it up. And now, do you see what I see? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think they're gonna do it to him. They might be coming out here with a uh, a bastion strat. And you he said see... it. He said it's unlikely to work, but um, I don't think I don't think London's going to be playing as 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 spread as Hangzhou would have. Mm. Maybe their comp would be a little bit different. We'll see. You do see the double sniper for the first time from um, London, which I <clears throat> I think is is good, right? But I actually do think if HE just goes back to their regular comp, they'll be able to deal with it with what they've been running. There's no shields for London. Um, so if they play spread, potentially they could still win this, right? Burn the shield, get a hook on the Bastion, uh, Hanzo get a flank, any of those kind of things can do very, very well against it. But if they just play this face 
at face value and they just run at each other they will get burned down and uh, this could be the end there's no shield for yellow though they could have gotten a free hook there arisa slept as well still no hook comes in but ana does get a pick hey, off on rez comes through but mercy goes down oh look at this though waffly huge flank already way behind them i don't know how he got there but bastion is still alive rez trying to go right in front of the cart but it just cannot get done and it is just the hog left and that will be the fight, I don't know how Waffly got back there. I wasn't watching, he must have came through or he jumped over the side. I didn't quite see, but he got a nasty flank off and um, their, their team got so distracted by it, they just completely got farmed. And you ready to see a tracer switch, you see a brig switch. This is desperation mode from London now. Yeah, I think they'll be, they'll get back in time to contest one more time, but it's gonna be, I don't think they'll have the, uh, have the comp to sustain here. Yeah, Tracer's gonna go down. They don't have recall anymore. They're gonna end up dying. Zarya's already down. Pulse Bomb comes out on the Hog. <clears throat> Bastion ult just absolutely styling here. Gets two more picks. Hog will go down, and that will be the series going in favor of HZ. <clears throat> Overall, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, what a performance by Hencho here. They they really hammered in their comp. They, they, they were able to surround London on pretty much all maps. Hit him with the speed, hit him with the violence, the aggression. Um, I, it was well played. I don't know what else to say. I think, uh, depending on the map, the fights, it, it looked like they had all different kinds of players pop off all night. Um, you know, well done. Yes, I, I really think um, by that lap map, last map, London was really feeling under pressure, right? They felt like they had to play things that they weren't comfortable on to try and counter um, HG. And at that point... HE can, if they want to, they can swap off to other things that they're good at. Um, anyway, London was playing on the back foot. I think that's a real struggle. I don't know if Junkertown was a real pick. I'm surprised. Um, <clears throat> I guess you couldn't have gone to King's Row. I'm assuming that it we didn't get to play hybrid I mean, if the map um, types are um, locked yeah, in. Yeah, I think they are set in an order. So that may have been a struggle. Assume. But yeah. I don't know. I guess in theory, Junkertown was a good pick because I'm thinking like Dorado is a really good map for like their their comp and all that kind of stuff and uh, payloads are normally pretty good for the the comp that HE was running so they kind of were in a bad spot it's really unfortunate they didn't get to go to hybrid because I think they would have done better on a hybrid map but overall I, I, I don't think the scoreline quite says it right like it was a 3-0 and HE was pretty dominant but London did have uh, you know, they have had their moments, and <clears throat> I think it was closer in that London didn't have their own specific DPS players. I think if they can pick up, like, one or two really strong DPS players that can focus on that specific role, I think you could see London being a very strong team in the league. Yeah, I thought, um, you know, getting full hell on Trucker Town, I don't think that quite tells the story. I thought that was probably their, their better map. I saw a few good things from the Hogs, a few big hooks. I think their tanks played pretty well. Um, Athena had a good had a good window on the bat that killed the the barraging Farah. So I, I did see some things that I, I you know thought were great plays and they, that they like I said they played quite well. Um, it just I think Hangzhou was just a little bit too overwhelming, a little bit too chaotic, and it was a lot to handle for him. Maybe didn't maybe didn't have like if they had a somber specialist that can really get those hacks in on the balls with like the Elton Genji to shut that down. I think maybe that probably would have been the pick to play. Um, but. Uh, I think entertaining nonetheless oh very entertaining match for sure he always gives you a good show win or lose they're always out here to play and uh london didn't give up like as i said they were playing on the back foot but it didn't look to me like they were tilted uh it looked like they were still shot calling. it just looked like overall it was you know some compositional things and, and, and newer players obviously i actually think oh man i forgot his name already what was the uh the sigma on that last map it was um, Waffly played Sigma on, on No, 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 for, for London. Yeah, it was their, it was their new player. Wasn't their it? new player, yeah. He actually looked really, really good on tank. Um, his yeah. DPS, I don't think was bad either. I didn't get to watch it a whole lot, but he actually looked... He had high charge on that Zarya. His Sigma looked pretty good as well. Monkey actually looked good on Hog as well. We saw some really clean hooks there. So I think there is yeah. potential for this team, and I, I, I'm interested to see if they can you know make a little swaps up with their roster and see what they can do uh, in the future. Uh, but overall, HE, a little bit better team tonight, uh, a little bit more coordinated, you know, knew what they wanted to do comp-wise, um, and we'll take the win. So that will be our match for tonight. 
Um, again, anybody who wants to watch the next match from HD, um, hopefully will be a very good match on Sunday, 8 East. Guys should come out and watch it. That will be uh, our team, um, Florida Mans, versus um, the Hangzhou. Uh, or, uh, they changed their name, so I always want to call them Spark, but the... Uh, Heck hounds. <laughs> oh, I, I probably called them Spark a few times. I, oh, I for sure. I, I definitely did too. <laughs> HD, anyway. Um, thank you guys all for coming out and watching. Much appreciated. Uh, all the follows, all uh, the gifted subs uh, were huge. I really appreciate it. Um, thanks for being active in the chat. I wish I could have kept up with it all at the same time as casting, but um, I, I wanted to you know stay in the action as much as I could. Um, <clears throat> but I do appreciate the chat, and I was reading as much as I could. Um, it was a fun time, and uh, hopefully I'll be casting some more games. Uh, if H, uh, We'll see if FTB can join me again, um, whether he liked it or not, and all that stuff. And uh, hopefully you all have a very good night. Do you have any closing words, FTB, as we head out? Um, I, know, I mean, we, we saw a few big plays here, but I think uh, the, the MVP really was the chat here, popping off in, in chat all day with the, with the subs, as you said. You, you love to see it. Yes, very MVP in my book, but, you know, I'm a little bit biased <laughs> right there. <laughs> All right. Well, that will be uh, uh, it for us tonight. Thank you guys for coming out, and we will see you guys next time. Later, folks.